Hey, everybody. Welcome to Connect in Cannabis, brought to you by Razzle. Uh, today, I am here with CEO and founder of Encore Labs, Spencer Wong. We'll be talking about testing, compliance, so the importance of testing, why it's essential, uh, and other things like that. But first, um, let me just remind everybody that Razzle is an online platform where you can uh, Find cannabis companies. If you're a business looking for uh, raising capital, you can use uh, you can uh, utilize our website and our services. And of course, if you're an investor looking for opportunities, please go to the invest section of the Razzle.com website. Okay. So, Spencer, how are you today? Hey, Brian. Good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Hey, my pleasure, sir. Of course, as always. Um, you know, doing fine. You know, um, uh, it's a nice sunny day here in Southern California. You know, uh, hard to complain. Yeah, definitely. The weather. You know, today it's weird. I, I was used to wearing at least long sleeve t-shirts, but today it's like, wow, 80 something degrees, man. It's, it's hot. I mean, yes. At least that's sort of getting back to normal, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah definitely. Exactly. Um, so let's dive right in. Um, you know, what is Encore Labs? Um, yeah. So, so Encore Labs, we, we are a cannabis testing lab in California, more specifically in Pasadena which is maybe about like 15, 20 minutes northeast of downtown LA. But we do service the whole California industry. So we do both the R&D and the compliance testing, which is required by the state to, for, for, for retailers to be able to sell the products uh, to consumers. Mm -hmm. So we're one of those, I guess you can say, third-party labs um, that administers the tests and we issue what's called a certificate of analysis, which is like a COA for short. You'll hear that a lot in, in the industry yeah. and you need that COA, like I said before, to, to be able to sell your products. And so, uh, you know, obviously that means you research, you, uh, sorry, uh, Encore Lab services, uh, retailers, obviously, um, who else do you service? Uh, well, let me back up. Uh, we don't service retailers. Uh, I would say we What's work with everyone in the supply chain except for the retailers. <laughs> yeah. So we work with the cultivators, we work with the manufacturers, the distribution companies, um, just because everybody needs things tested. Yeah. And after we issue the COAs to the distribution companies, then they can go ahead and show the COA to the retail stores and move their products to stores. Yeah, slight misspeak on my part. Yes, not the retailer, the manufacturers, growers, cultivators, et cetera. Everybody in the supply chain before it gets there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we do kind of like maintain, uh, I guess, the safety in the industry. We're, 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 I mean, if you needed an, an analogy in the non-cannabis world, we would be like the, the FDA that checks for that apple that you buy at the grocery store is safe to consume, right? We're, we're that lab that makes sure the cannabis you consume is safe to consume. Exactly. And obviously um, that's important. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, you know, not everybody has been used to kind of this um, flow, but I'd say over the last few years, it seems like it's getting a little more um, understood. Would you um, kind of echo those sentiments in re with regards to, you know, essentially why is, testing essential? Like, obviously you want to make sure that things are safe, but it's more than that, right? Um, yeah, I would say it's like, just to kind of reiterate what I mentioned before, it's to, to protect consumer safety, right? On mm -hmm. um, consumer consumption, um, and to dive into more detail with that is, is because, you know, pre, pre legalization, which is 2018 in California, is you know there wasn't <clears throat> sorry there was no regulations for growing marijuana um as opposed to like with any plant when you grow things you need to spray pesticides and i mean you don't have to but but it helps keep keeps the bugs away and, and things right. like that grow a bigger yield so pre-regulations um many people were you know they didn't have to worry about passing tests and going through regulations because there was no requirement, right? right. Um, now that the rules have taken place, like we make sure things like pesticide levels are within certain limits. There's no metals like lead, cadmium, things like that in your, uh, in your products. Um, there's no solvents, which can be like hazardous to your health, things like that. 
So what we've noticed, I can tell you, is, is in 2018, when our lab first started, obviously when it first became legal, when testing was required, this whole, it was new to many cultivators in the industry. They're like, hey, how, you know, I used to spray this pesticide all the time. I, I, you're telling me I can't use this anymore? Like, how do I grow the same yield? So, you know, in 2018, there was a lot of, how do I say it? I don't want to call them dirty products. There was a lot of um, products that wouldn't, didn't meet the threshold to be able to sell to consumers, right? Sure. But yeah. fast forward, we're in 2020 now, 420 is next week. Uh, we've noticed over the years, you know, people have, have learned like, oh, okay, I can't spray this much pesticide. I have to learn to grow certain right. ways. I have to learn to do extraction certain different ways. And they have learned and there's a lot more cleaner products in the industry now. Yeah. It sounds like um, education, again, is a, is a really big kind of piece of, um, you know, what people need uh, in terms of just understanding, you know, not only like why it's reg- like why it's regulated this way and why you need to use a testing facility, but what a testing facility does and can provide for you, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so ultimately, are you seeing any kind of, um, I suppose like that's one trend you were just acknowledging, like in 2018, people were, you know, kind of doing things all over the place. Then we implement yeah. some kind of structure and some, you know, regulation to it. Um, how have you seen people adjust to that? You know, how have you felt that, um, you know, are folks learning quickly? Is there a lot of resources for them? Do you guys have resources for those kind of folks? I mean, we, from our side, we can give advice and, and, and consultation to the best of our knowledge. But like, again, if we only know what's in the product right. as for like growing, there's usually these master growers, master cultivators that I mean, they're professionals at, at growing. We don't know. We just tell them, hey, we found this much product in your this much levels of pesticide or metals in, in, in your your flower sure. uh, you might need to cut back on it so what they do is probably on their next batch or their next harvest they would try to okay last time and they're looking at our coas like we had too much of this pesticide maybe they'll use something else they'll just use less um, because well if you don't if your whole crop fails you have to destroy it that's kind of what it is and no one wants to throw away hundreds and hundreds of pounds of, of weed right so no they, no, they don't uh, and uh there you just i think gave the best pitch for why you need a testing company uh 100 percent over you know um that is the worst case scenario and i know you've seen it even more times than i have and unfortunately i've seen it enough times to um let everybody know that this is very real very very real i mean um Especially, I mean, a good example as well is the vape crisis, right? Yep. You know, I mean, if there was never testing labs and, and this whole vape thing, you would never know which vapes there are using the, the, the illicit ones with, with cutting it with, with dirty stuff, like vitamin E acetate is what is, is said to be the culprit of all those deaths and, and, and illnesses, I guess you can say. Yep. So you need a lab to test. For, for these things to make sure the vape pens are going out in the industry that are being sold in the legal market is, does not contain these harmful contaminants to lead to this very issue. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think it's very fascinating in terms of like, you know, people were doing a lot of different things because it was less regulated, which is, you know, um, interesting, you know, um, but ultimately now that it's legal and there's a lot of other requirements, you know, I, I just think the importance of a lab can't be understated. I mean, obviously so many businesses need to utilize you, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And if I recall correctly, you know, um, where, how many labs, do you know how many labs there are in California? So I think the last time I checked, which is probably a few months ago, I think there was like maybe, 32 somewhere. I mean, I think it's below 40 somewhere on the, in between the 30 and 40 range of, of lab licenses. So sure. not all of those licenses though are up and running. Right. Um, and we kind of noticed a weird trend too. So when it first started in the industry and then I think at the end of 2018, there was about like maybe 60 lab licenses around there. I, I don't remember. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of 2019, it kind of dropped back down to a low 
I don't want to say a low point, but down to like 28 at one point. Mm. So it's like, what happened to, to all these, these laps that, that had licenses? And I think it's, it's not that easy to, to start a lab, right? People, I mean, any business is not easy to start. Um, yeah. You know, it's not like in the beginning, I think what happened was a lot of people thought like, oh, cannabis, you know, I just if I get into the cannabis industry, it'll be successful. You know, I throw any money at it, start it. It's cannabis. It has to be successful. You hear, you watch these movies with drug dealers that have so much money, right? <laughs> Why not? Um, they're under my nose. Exactly right. Yeah, so I mean, we'll think, and then that's kind of why we, I, I think part of the, the reason for the lights is to spike up and then now cut back down is yeah. people tried and they didn't succeed because I can tell you it's not what the movies portray. It's not easy. It's not like, it's just like any other business, right? It's just yeah. dealing with cannabis though. It's like, you know, you want to be successful. You do have to kind of know and put in the work and and it's not just what people think, you know, I'm going to start kind of this business. I'm going to be the next Pablo Escobar. Like, <laughs> yeah. Not that easy. <laughs> well, and now as we move into more legal and everything, you know, and, and there's different regulations for different states and there's different, you know, kind of requirements and all that sort of thing, you know, um, even more difficult for folks who aren't at least trying to kind of do things in the uh, most appropriate way or also for another lab just to spring up. It's not, it's not easy to do. There are a finite amount of licenses as you've referred to. Um, and then it's not easy to start a business. And then in, on top of that, you have to worry about all the different um, regulations for all the places that you service or all the areas Definitely. Of locations that you service. Yeah. Yeah. I mean like um, everything is just the cost of equipment is a lot. Regulations is a lot. It's just, you can't mail these things. We have to have people really driving all over the place to, to pick it up. You know, you can't just throw it into the uh, USPS or, or the mail and like ship it across some place, you know? So yeah. it's just, yeah. It's yeah. A lot of work. There's a lot to it. And that's one of the things I'm really glad that we've talked about here because, you know, what Spencer and his team have done is, you know, very, very impressive. Uh, and for them to be, you know, in this uh, area thriving and uh, really, really helping out a lot of companies, um, I can pitch them uh, if he won't do it himself. They're a great resource for you to to lean on. If you need uh, help with any of this sort of stuff, please reach out to Encore Labs. They they do wonderful work. They really do. Um, and, um, you know, on that note, um, have you guys had to, you know, make any hard pivots uh, given the current environment, you know, with COVID, et cetera? So, yes, definitely. Um, the good news about this part is, is, or this question, is that cannabis is an essential business, right? So it's good for the industry. It, it kind of makes, I guess, it's not, it makes a statement that like, hey, you know, like it should be federally legalized and things like that. So that's a good thing and it's essential. So we are still in business. We definitely have taken measures to to kind of, protect the safety of just the our employees um, products and just anything like that um, so we do offer like lab tours and, and things like that but we've cut that all out until obviously the situation we're trying to limit the number of visitors to our lab sure. uh, we have done some workplace rearrangement shifts things like that uh, everyone has like maintained their six feet kind of work area of space. Right. Uh, we have the guys that are not essential to be in the lab, like our sales and marketing team. They they all work from home. Uh, definitely, we, have, we provide face masks to, to all our employees. They, they uh, must wear at all times. Uh, anytime someone walks through the door, we have a little, what do you call those? Those temperature checking guns. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 So check, check their temperature as they, before they walk in, we check everybody's temperatures before they walk in to ensure, you know, if anybody that has a fever or has a high temperature, we just don't let them in the lab. Like, Hey, go home. Or if it's a customer we're dropping off some sample, like leave it at the door. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll pick it up. We'll email you a PDF form to fill out or something like that. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. So we are taking measures. Uh, we've reduced, uh, I want to say, I don't want to say reduce the hours, but we've limited the number of people that need to come into the lab on a daily basis just mm -hmm. for the spacing and things like that. So right. hand sanitizer machines everywhere now. Yep. 
Well, it's like you said, you know, your sales and marketing team probably doesn't need to be, uh, you know, at the facility, you know, all the time, you know, yeah, you might have to take out kind of their ability to give a tour, which I know is probably an effective sales tool uh, mm -hmm. for them. Um, but you guys have a lot of good content. You have a lot of like, you can see the lab, you know, you can see it out there. So, you know, we might have you come in and do like a virtual, virtual tour on the, on one of these videos. Yeah, we absolutely <laughs> could do something like that. That's a great yeah, call. Yeah. I think that'd, that'd be like cool. That. If yeah. you are, if you, if the audience wants to see what a lab looks like, we're more than happy to, to give them a virtual tour. I think Just that's like, um, one. you know, I, I, I I'm kind of off topic, but I, I know these like real estate red fins and, and, and things like that. People can't go look at open houses anymore. So I did see the advertise like, Hey, this Saturday virtual tour and tune in. Oh, yep. Cool. Or you should just create them and have them readily available for anybody who might be wanting to check in. Yeah, yeah, that works too. You know, a lot of folks, <laughs> a lot of companies do do that, of course. And, uh, you know, I'll just give anybody some marketing, free marketing advice right here. Um, if you have some, if your facility or your environment is a big part of the services you provide or the tools that you need to, you know, convert a client or whatever, a prospect into a client, video it. And make sure that it is seen, being able to be seen by people because it's not as if people are going to just be able to go places for at least the short term. Yep. And honestly, not a lot of people have time to do that. So what better way to shrink that amount of time by offering it for your people to see, you know, for other people who might be curious to see. So that way they can see, oh, here's my team or here's the team I'd work with. Here's what they do. Here's what the facility looks like. Look at that. They have top of the line equipment and they're strategically placed correctly. And, you know, it gives you a sense of comfort, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? And the fact that you guys do tours is great. Like that's a smart, smart yeah. thing to do. You know, obviously it dies down right now because of the current environment, but yep. you can do those virtual tours, like you said. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, so Spencer, before we take off, let's make sure everybody knows where to find Encore Labs out there. Yeah, um, you can visit our website, uh, encore-labs.com. Uh, I mean, or just shoot us an email, customer service at encore-labs.com. Um, I know uh, during this time, like I said, we are open. We do service all of California. So all your testing needs, all your turnaround times still maintain the same. We're not behind or anything like that. So we know 420 is right around the corner. So give us a call. There you go. Especially if, yeah, for you guys who are doing the uh, kind of special deals and things like that for 420, hit up Spencer and Encore Labs. They'll happy yeah. to help you kind of make it the best 420 it can be. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and of course, you can find them on Razzle too on the uh, uh, for the service provider, services index, excuse me. Um, hey, Spencer, thank you so much for being here. I look forward to doing that virtual tour soon. <laughs> definitely. Thanks, Brian, for having me. You're very welcome. Be safe. Take care. Yeah.